Hello everyone, I hope that you are doing great. In this video, we will talk about the server virtualization. What exactly does it mean to virtualize a server? And how does it work? Before I answer all your questions, let's talk about back in the old days. Just a couple years ago, when the virtualization was not widely adopted yet. Whenever a company had to introduce new servers in its environment, servers, such as a web server, a domain controller or maybe a database server, where each server had its own requirement for the hardware, operating system and libraries etc. They had to follow a process. An overview of the process looked something like this. First of all, company had to evaluate their needs. Evaluation about what exactly they are looking for in a server. Then, they had to place an order with the vendor. Vendor processed the order and shipped the items to the company, either as a single shipment, or in multiple shipments. Once company had got their hardware, they had to rack it, ensure that proper connectivity is in place, install the operating system, and, finally, they installed the desired application. Maybe you can already feel it. This whole process took forever. If someone from the upper management came in and said that we need more servers, company had to repeat the same tiring process again. Not just that. Companies often underestimated their requirements. Often their applications had performance issues, or the other way around, they ordered much faster server as compared to what they actually needed. Usually a faster server means a server having much powerful hardware. This directly relates to more money, so, faster does not necessarily mean cheap. There were other challenges too. Challenges, such as power required to run these servers, server maintenance, space required to securely put all these servers, management of the heat produced by these servers etc. Not to mention the money being used by each department who requested these servers. This list goes on and on. This is exactly where the virtualization came into place to solve most of the challenges which companies were facing. Let's revisit our previous example where a company had to introduce three new servers in their environment. Now, instead of ordering three physical servers, company could order a single powerful server, which had more RAM, CPU, storage and the network cards. With the help of a special piece of software called Hypervisor, this powerful server can now run multiple servers, virtually. This brings us to our original question, what exactly is the server virtualization? By definition, server virtualization is the process of dividing a single physical server into multiple unique and isolated virtual servers. Each server can have its own operating system and set of application installed within. In other words, you can run operating systems in a virtual environment instead of running them on a physical hardware. Each virtual server acts as it is running on a physical machine. Because you can run multiple servers on a single powerful physical server, this eliminates the need of dedicated physical servers for each application. One obvious thing, a big cut in the cost. But what makes it possible? A hypervisor is what does the magic. What exactly is the hypervisor then? Hypervisor is a special piece of software which directly communicates to the physical servers as hardware. It creates an abstracted layer of the underlying hardware and relays the physical resources to the virtual servers. As shown in here, a hypervisor sits on top of the physical hardware and helps to run the operating systems virtually. Isolation remains in place which makes each virtual server think that they are running on a physical server, independently. Each virtual server can have its own desired operating system, application-specific library files, and the applications. Regarding our example, a single physical server now can run three virtual servers, each having their own OS type and the application along with required libraries. Before you conclude this video, I wish to tell you that there is one important concept yet need to be understood. That is, what are the types of hypervisors? Hypervisors come into two types. Type 1 and Type 2. Type 1 hypervisors run directly on the physical server. They are also known as the bare metal hypervisors. Some examples are VMware ESXi. Citrix Zen Server and Microsoft Hyper-V. 
Type 1 hypervisor is directly installed in the physical server just as you would install a Windows or Linux operating system in your personal desktop or laptop. Even though, the installation and configuration methods are different for each vendor-specific hypervisor, but, the idea remains the same. Hypervisor sits on top of the hardware and then it virtualizes the servers up to the capacity of the physical hardware. Each virtualized server runs in isolation with its own operating system and the application. Type 2 hypervisors, however, require a host operating system. Basically, your physical hardware, server or laptop, must have an operating system installed such as Windows or Linux. Then you will install the hypervisor, just as any ordinary software. Once installed successfully, you will be able to run virtual machines in your computer similar to Type 1 hypervisor. Since Type 2 hypervisors are hosted in the host's operating system, they are also known as the hosted hypervisors. Some examples are VMware Workstation, Oracle VirtualBox, and KVM. That's it for this video. I hope that now you have an idea about what exactly the server virtualization is and how does a hypervisor work. More importantly, now you know about different types of the hypervisors. Let me know in the comments below if you are interested in knowing about how can you choose a hypervisor or what are the pros and cons of virtualization. Don't forget to like and share this video and make sure to subscribe my YouTube channel. Until then, goodbye and happy learning.